I'd just like to talk a bit about the brain. We all have brains and sometimes it's difficult to know how it works. There's no manual. Uh, so let's look at reading in the brain. First thing to say about the brain and reading is that reading is not natural. Our brains were not made to read. Reading is something that has come along quite recently in terms of human evolution. The oldest reading we know about is only five or six thousand years old. Uh, humans are much, much older than that, so our brains are much older. And reading on your own, sitting down reading a book quietly, is something that's very recent. Um, until a few hundred, even less than a hundred years ago, reading often meant somebody would stand up and read aloud to other people so they could hear what was written on the paper. So reading is not natural. Um, B, D, confusion. So when you're learning to read English, very often it's very common for people to be confused between the B and the D. Um, this is completely normal, as I'll explain in a moment. And as far as the brain is concerned, the brain is not made to read. The brain is made to listen. So when you're reading, your brain needs to listen to what's written on the paper. Just to look at the reading process then, how do we read? Um, first of all, we need to recognize the letters in terms of the process. Then we need to convert the letters into sounds. And then we need to convert those sounds into meanings. In order to read Oh, this is bottom up. So this kind of processing is what's called bottom up processing. So we're starting with small parts, putting them together and making big parts. I'll come back to bottom up processing later. Uh, so this is a this is a, a how the brain works. Um, as you can see, it's very complicated. And the part in red in this picture is the part that handles the first step in the process. It's the part that recognizes letters. Now, our brains were not made to recognize letters. So when we do recognize letters, our brains need to use a part of the brain that was made to do something else. And that part of the brain actually is the part we use for recognizing faces. And as you may realize with a face, and in fact, many things in the natural world, there is uh, symmetry. So this side is the same as this side. If we're looking at a face from this side or from this side, we need to think of it as being the same face and the same thing. Now, if you're looking at B and D, uh, you may go like this to remember which is B, which is D. A B, this looks like a B. It looks like one of these the other way around from the other side. So for our brains, reading confusing B and D is a very normal thing to do because our brains are using part of the brain that recognizes faces. In order to read quickly, then, we need to process letters in parallel and we need to convert letters to sounds automatically. We need to know that red is red, red, because R-E-A-D could be read. So read could be read, read, or red could be red, red. But red is not red, read, but it's the same R-E-A-D. And your brain needs to work that all out somehow. And then convert the sounds into meanings. So this is different between English and, for example, Chinese. Uh, I don't have data on Japanese reading, but I imagine some things are similar between reading in Chinese and reading in English. Some things are similar between Chinese and reading in Japanese. Um, as you can see, these are parts of the brain that are activated as you're reading. So some of them are both activated, the same places activated, whether you're reading Chinese or English. There are some parts of the brain that are only activated uh, when you're speaking Chinese or reading Chinese. Um, the right brain, for example, is activated in Chinese reading. Um, so there's a slight difference with the way the brain is activated 
for reading or for speaking in different languages, especially where languages have an alphabet, um, it's different. This comes down to cognitive load again. So if we think about what's happening inside our brains, and let's think about the first language first. So when we're reading, if I'm reading English, then I need to use some of my brain power for decoding the letters, some of my brain power for decoding, putting words out of letters, then I need to make the words into sounds, then the sounds into meanings. And if I'm reading in my first language, most of the time I'm thinking about the content, I'm thinking about what I'm reading. I'm not thinking about words, I'm not thinking about sounds. If, on the other hand, you're reading in a second language, then it's going to be a bit more difficult processing the letters if you're not used to English letters. It's going to be more brain power is going to be required for processing letters into words. More brain power is used for processing the words into sounds. And then more power from the brain for changing sounds into meanings. What this means is there's much less brain power available for thinking about the content. And in fact, if these take up too much effort, then there's no power left at all for thinking about the content. Um, what another way to think is what's called top-down processing. And in fact, often if we're reading in the first language, we're not starting with letters. We're starting with ideas and we're starting knowing what's happening, knowing something about the content that we're reading. And we work down from that towards the letters. Um, this is something that when you're reading in a foreign language, it's usually bottom up. So you're stuck with the letters trying to build up, make sense from the letters. Uh, this means there's a very heavy cognitive load. So you're using lots of brain power to read. Um, it's not yet automatic. If you keep reading, it will become automatic, which I'll come to in a moment. And often um, it's boring because you're thinking about, you're not thinking about the content, you're thinking about these sounds and these letters and these meanings. And also because you're using a lot of brain power, it's quite tiring to read in a foreign language. So, um, just to go back to these, these four kinds of, of reading, skimming, scanning, intensive reading, extensive reading, uh, which one will most improve your English? Um, probably, skimming is very difficult. You need to be good at reading before you can start skimming. So skimming is not going to help you get better at English. You need to get better at English first. Um, the same with scanning. Um, intensive reading can be helpful, but what you really need is to be able to read automatically. And to do that, extensive reading is the best thing to do. Always with you what cannot be done. Hear you nothing that I say. You must unlearn what you have learned. All right, I'll give it a try. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. So what is extensive reading? How should we do it? How do we do it? Why should we do it? Um, so extensive reading sometimes is called tadoku. In, that's a direct Japanese translation. Um, it can be called graded reading. The idea is there are different grades, different levels of books from very easy up to more difficult, more difficult. Um, it's also been called rakudoku, which I like as a name, um, Raku suggests that it's easy, that it's fun. And sometimes it's called side reading. Now, I don't like calling it side reading. Um, I think that reading is one of the best things you can do to improve your English. For most people who are studying English. Um, and side on the side is studying grammar is on the side. English lessons are on the side. Uh, reading is probably the main the main thing. So let's not call it side reading. Uh, we can call it. This is a definition of uh, extensive reading. 
uh, students reading a lot of easy, enjoyable books. Why should we do extensive reading? Uh, well, one big reason is, is fluency. Fluency means understanding language in real time, um, familiarity with vocabulary. So fluency means knowing words well. Not You don't have to know many words, but you, the words you know, you need to know well, so that when you see them, you know the meaning immediately. You don't have to think about it. That's what fluency means. And extensive reading is a very good way to practice fluency. And to be good at English, fluency is important. Um, also, interestingly, uh, reading more will improve your writing. This was from a class at this university. Um, on the left is their writing score. Along the bottom is how many books they read. And you can see there's a trend that people who read more are better at writing. Um, how do we do it then? There are three things we need. One of them is books. We have books. We can talk about that in a moment. The other one is time. Um, it seems many people have lots of time at the moment. Uh, we're not allowed to go out. So time is not a problem. And permission to enjoy reading. And I'm just going to ask for Sakai Sensei's help. Um, Sakai Kunihide Hide Sensei is a extensive reading, a Tadoku expert. And he has three rules for extensive reading that I'd like you to try and follow when you read. Um, first of all, no dictionaries. Uh, next, if you don't know a word, ignore it. Next, if it's difficult, stop reading. So let's just go through these. First of all, um, no dictionaries. Uh, dictionaries cause frustration when we're reading if there's a word we don't know, we're looking for our dictionary. Um, we look in the dictionary, we find the word. It takes us a long time to find the word. And when we do find the word, sometimes we're reading the definition of the word and we don't know another word. And then maybe the next day you may find you're reading again and you find a word you don't know and you look in your dictionary again and it's the same word that you looked up yesterday. So dictionaries don't really help us to remember. So if we can choose books that we can enjoy without a dictionary, we will save a lot of time. And instead of time getting frustrated, instead of wasting time looking up words that we forget the next day, we can spend that time reading. Um, so if you don't know a word, what do you do? Well, concentrate on the words that you do know. If there's a page with 100 words on, if there's one word you don't know, there are 99 words that you do know. So think about those 99 words. Think about the story. And if you can skip over, jump over the words you don't know, this means you can read faster. Then you'll read more, which is better. Um, the next rule then, if it's boring, stop reading. Don't try too hard. You need to just read. And if, if, it's, if it's difficult, if you're having trouble reading, then you're probably wasting your time. So go and find, a, go and find another book. Go and find an easier book. Go and find a more interesting book. Uh, there are many, many books to read. Life is short. There is no time to read boring books. And you can always read books later. There may be a book that you want to read for a particular reason, but it may be just above your level. If you keep reading other books, easier books, your level will get better, and the book will still be there next month, next week, next year. Another thing about boring books, difficult books, stopping reading, is do stop as soon as possible. So maybe you you have a new book. Yeah, I've got a new one. I have a new book here. New book. It's very exciting. Very excited. I'm going to read this new book. Start with the first page. Here's the first page. First page. It's a bit boring. Maybe maybe it'll get better. Maybe the second page. Maybe the second page will be better. 
Let's go to the second page. Second page. The second page will not get better. If it's a boring book on the first page, it's a boring book. Stop reading it as soon as possible. So here are Sakai Sensei's three rules then. Um, no dictionaries. If you don't know a word, ignore it. And if it's boring, stop reading. So please try and follow these rules as you're reading. Uh, to choose a book, uh, you need to go to X Reading. Later, a link will be added onto uh, EALS. Um, start off with the lowest level. So start with the easiest books you can. Find something interesting and get reading. Um, how do you know if it's the right level? Well, read a page. Um, if it takes too long, it's too difficult. If you need a dictionary, it's too difficult. And if you don't want to read the next page, it's boring. So stop reading, pick a different book. Um, the targets then, um, the targets for this class, I'm not sure whether we can do all of these, but the targets are listening, speaking, reading and writing. Um, as far as reading goes, the target for reading is to read fluently and to read interesting, enjoyable stories. And I don't want you to try, I just want you to read. 